It takes effort to overcome suffering. It's something we don't like to hear. We'd rather think you can just simply sit there and it'll go away on its own. Or someone else will come and take it away for us. Or maybe we can read a book and understand all about it and that'll take care of it. But it's not the case. Because there's also another principle that it's through effort that we gain wisdom. You look at the Eightfold Path, it starts out with right view, and then the right view informs our efforts. But then again, the efforts turn around and train right view. The things we learn through the practice that you can't learn from books, you can't learn from hearing someone else talk about them. They come from your own efforts to abandon unskillful behavior and develop skillful behavior. That requires desire. So again, discernment comes from desire. And John Cha has a nice analogy. He says that you're going to the market, you've picked up a banana, and you're taking it home. And someone asks you, what are you going to do with a banana? You say, you're going to eat it. And they say, are you planning to eat the peel as well? And you say, no. And you say, why are you carrying the peel too? Why aren't you just carrying the, the flesh? And John Chai asks, how are you going to answer that person? And the answer is, you answer through desire. In other words, you want to come up with an answer. That's how you figure out the answer, which is that the time hasn't come to let go of the peel yet. You need the peel so you can carry the bed on the home and it doesn't turn to mush in your hands. Once you get home, then you take off the peel, eat the banana, and then you're done with it. And the same with the practice. You have to want to really do it skillfully for it to work. So again, it's not simply a matter of watching things arising and passing away and say, oh, they arise and pass away. Anybody can see that. What it takes is putting in your own efforts to cut through all the unskillful things in the mind. And in the course of that, you learn an awful lot about cause and effect in the mind. And it's through understanding cause and effect that you really break through to something beyond cause and effect. The Buddha himself, when he was asked about his awakening, the short answer was he learned a basic causal principle. From the arising of this comes the arising of that. When this is, that is. When this isn't, that isn't. From the cessation of this comes the cessation of that. It sounds very basic. Actually, it's quite complex. Some things arise together and pass away together. Other things arise and their effects arise later. Or they may pass away and their effects will pass away later. So you've got two principles right there interacting which makes things very complex. You do something right now, and you can't be guaranteed that you're going to see the results right now. At the same time, you may be experiencing something right now, and you can't be sure whether it's coming from what you're doing right now or something that happened in the past. You have to check things over and over again. Like that story of the two Thai farmers going to town for the very first time and seeing their very first blinking neon light. They go up to the light, and it's flashing, and one of them blows on the light, and it happens to go out. So he thinks he's blown out the neon light. You have to stay there for a while and realize, okay, you can blow on it, it doesn't really have any effect. And it's the same with the meditation. You have to try several techniques again and again and again. They may not work the first day, but if you stick with them, you may discover that they do work. Or vice versa. Something that may work today may not work tomorrow. So you have to keep coming back again and again. You take the basic principles and you learn how to adjust them to your, to your practice, what's actually going on right now. And a large part of understanding the Dharma is knowing what are the basic principles that never change and what are the things that have to depend on your own ingenuity. The precepts never change. 
the basic pattern of the practice never changes. It's simply a matter of you're learning what's right for your situation right now, how you apply the basic principles. And it's in using your ingenuity this, this way that you really exercise your discernment, again, in ways that reading books or listening to other people can't do. For example, you're working with the breath right now. What kind of breathing is good? Well, there's no categorical answer to that one. But feels good right now. You experiment. Longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. And you find something that feels good, so you stick with it. And it may feel good for a while, and then it doesn't feel good, so good anymore. So you've got to change. Then once you've got the breath going well, what do you do with it? Some people want to jump straight to insight practice, but you don't gain insight until you learn how to maintain your concentration. In fact, the task of maintaining your concentration is an important way of developing your insight. Because again, you're learning how to read cause and effect in the mind. So you stick with a nice in and out rhythm of breathing. And after a while, you begin to drift off. Okay, what are you going to do? And John Lee recommends that you take the sensation of the breathing and the comfort and spread it around the body. Expand your awareness so it fills the whole body all the way down to the tips of the fingers, the tips of the toes, out to every pore of the skin. And the energy that's required to keep your awareness that broad and maintain it without letting it shrink. That's one way of overcoming drowsiness, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Other times you've got to use your ingenuity in other ways. And I found sometimes that if you make up your mind you're going to stay with one spot in the body for three in and out breaths and then move to another for three and then another for three. In other words, you keep moving around, and you have to keep counting your breaths. It gives you something to do. It gets you engaged. Or you can think about the different parts of the body. We have that channel in the 32 parts of the body. You can make your own list. Or you can go through the list. Hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin. When you get to skin, try to think of the skin surrounding your whole body. That helps to develop full body awareness. Maybe one of the reasons why the Buddha stops there, usually at the first five. Those are also the parts of the body you actually see from the outside. Everything else is inside. If you want, you can work with the bones. Visualize the bones in your toes. Work up through the bones in your legs, the pelvis, the back, the neck, the skull. Start with the tips of the fingers, go up the arms. In other words, you've got to give the mind work to do here in the present moment, otherwise it's going to zone out. And again, what may work today may not work tomorrow. But don't throw away something that worked today and doesn't work tomorrow, because it may work again some other day down the line. You've got to realize that the mind has different conditions from day to day. And sometimes your defilements are quick to do an end run around a technique that worked yesterday. So don't think of it as meaning that yesterday's technique was a failure, simply that you've got a new situation right now. And if you start getting lazy thinking that you can just hold on to one approach that's going to work every day, every day. Then, as many of the Thai and Johns would say, your defilements are going to laugh at you. You think you can look in the same spot and find them every day, and they're going to be off someplace else. Or they'll come up dressed up in other ways. In other words, you've got to keep your ingenuity alive, keep your discernment alive, so you can deal with 
problems as they come up. Otherwise, laziness sets in. This is another way in which effort gives rise to discernment, the effort to be skillful. So learn to be up for the challenge. Your mind is very complex, and you've got to be willing to study something very complex. It's going to take time. It's going to take energy. And sometimes you may see your sense of accomplishment just dissolving in front of your eyes. But that's simply a sign that you've got to learn how to ramp up your efforts and go back and look over what you thought you knew. Because you're going to be learning many things over and over and over again. But there's always the possibility that going over something old you may see and something new you didn't see before. After all, all the things you need to know are right here. Simply your discernment is not sharp enough yet. So you're going to have to be looking over again and again and again the same spot where the mind and the body meet at the breath. It's like reading a really good book several times. You read it the first time, you notice some things. You read it again a couple months later, you, you notice something else. You read it again next year, I think you, it's a different book. It's the same book, but you're a different person. So bring the same attitude to your breath. There's a lot more here than you may suspect. A lot of different angles you can use to approach it. If you learn how to think outside the box a bit, you'll see all kinds of things right here, where you've been all along, that you've never seen before. That's how your discernment gets trained, and that's how we learn how to overcome suffering.